In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use some of the basic visualizations available to you within paginated reports in Power BI. We're going to go through it step by step together from scratch so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel. We cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. Paginated reports in Power BI lets you create reports that is intended to fit in a page for printing. And there are plenty of use cases in which you might want to do this. So today we're going to go through how you can create a simple sales report uh, using paginated reports using basic visuals. So we're going to start here from the report builder, which is basically a tool that lets you create your paginated reports. So think of it as the Power BI desktop, where you would typically create your interactive report reports. But in this case, we're using Report Builder. So this is something that you can download from your Power BI service quite easily. So to start, uh, we need to set up our reports data on the left hand side, first of all. So we're going to go to data source and create a new data source from here. We're going to name this one Northwind and we're going to leave it to a SQL server because that's where we're pulling our data from. Uh, you might have your data somewhere else or if you don't have any data, you can just simply select enter data and that will let you import your own data from from scratch. So, But for now, we're going to leave it to SQL server. We're going to hit build so that we don't have to type or write the connection string ourselves. I'm gonna type localhost on the server, which is because my server or my database is hosted locally. And then we're gonna choose Northwind, which is the database name that I want to use. So if you hit OK and test connection, just make sure that it's successfully connected and that's your data source done. The second thing is we need to create a data set here for the information that we want to visualize in our report. So what I'm visualizing is a sales report that lets you see for each country that you select, it will give you a report of, you know, how, how much in sales did they make, which categories of products are the highest or lowest, and a line chart that shows us basically the trend of those sales and when they happen across the dates that we have um, in our order dates. So we're going to name this one orders. And we'll use the Northwind data source that we have just um, created. And then Query Designer will let us choose the tables and columns that we want to bring in. So it's important to only bring the ones or the columns that we need and just to keep our reports, you know, optimized. So we're going to go to the tables here. We'll look for a few things. We're going to look for the category name because we need that. So just click that. Under customers, we want the region or the country. This is the value that we will need to filter later. Let me just think if there's anything else here. Under not under employees, not under order details, we want the unit price and quantity. We need to calculate the total sales based on that. The on the orders, we need the order dates to visualize when they're ordered. So we can show it in a line chart. The products, product name, if we need it. And uh, I believe that's it. So I think this should be everything that we need. We're just going to click auto detect here. And that's because the relationships are already set up in our SQL server. So we don't really need to create those manually. So I just click auto detect um, and it just finds or tries to find a relationship uh, between these columns across all of these different tables that we, we have selected from. So we're going to hit OK. As you can see, it's created our select statement here. We'll hit OK. And that bit is done. So there's nothing here yet in the reports. We're just setting up our data for now. So let's create another data set, which is what we're going to use for uh, our parameter. We're going to call this one country and Northwind as a data source once again. And then from here, we'll simply just go to the customer's country and just import that one by itself. Hit OK. And then we'll go to parameters, add parameter, call this one country, call this one country. Under the available values, this is the drop down that we will find on the parameter. We'll just go get values from a query, take it from the country, the value and the label to be just the country. And then that's it. So now if you run, the report will be empty, but you should be able to select a country from the list. So if you report, there's no nothing there except the, the time and dates that you ran that report. 
which we're gonna customize in a little bit. Um, we also need to change a few things here before we jump into the report itself. The first is on the dataset properties of the orders. We just want to make sure that it's being filtered by the um, the parameter. So we're going to choose the parameter country here. So if the country in the parameter is equals to the country in the orders table, so only show those orders basically. So if you hit OK, that should be done. And uh, last thing, I just want to create a new calculated field here, which will be just sales. And I just want to calculate unit price multiplied by quantity like this. Hit OK. So just see, make sure that there are no errors. Yep. OK, so now let's customize this report a little bit. Uh, let's remove this title here and let's add it. Well, we need that title for the page, but we want to put it in a header just so that when the reports uh, and if it does do a page break, the header is always there. Let's insert an image, which will be the logo. So import raw recordings all files. Ah, here we go. So we'll just import this logo. We're just going to use the default logo, Microsoft logo, just as an example. I'm going to insert a text box here, which will be the name of the report, uh, sales report. And we're going to put the name of the country that we want to put, we want the report on. So let's see, maybe it's better if we just do it like this and make the font slightly bigger, like something like this. And one thing that we want to make sure of is this part to be dynamic. So to do that, we're going to create a expression. We're going to go text properties. Well, actually, maybe not text properties. So let's delete that and insert a placeholder. The label will be it doesn't really matter. I think country is fine. And the value needs to be whatever is in the country field. So that should be OK. So now if we run this report, we select one of these countries. As you can see, it's giving us the name of that country. I also just noticed that in this drop down, it's, more, it's replicating the countries, which actually is not something that I want. So I'm just going to go back to the country properties here on the data sets. Um, I think if I just do select distinct and then add an order by country. I'm hoping this will be OK. Yeah, so let's see if that works. So as you can see, now it's giving us a country for just a unique list of the country. And it's sorted alphabetically, which is what I wanted so that you can easily find the country that you're looking for. So if you select a country, hit view, it will just give you. Hmm, why does it just give me? Oh, OK. Not sure why. Perhaps I need to make sure that the filter here. Nope. Field country. Oh, I see. I've messed this one up as well. So it needs to be value. So the drop down needs to be the country from the orders data set. So that way it's being filtered depending on what's being selected in the parameter. So now if that should work. So not choose Argentina, be France. If you view reports, it should give you the France information. Perfect. So now you saw how easy it was for me to add a dynamic expression on a text box on our title. We want to try to use that to visualize, let's say, a KPI card to show or give us a total of the total sales, which is basically one of the more basic things that you would add in a typical Power BI report. So we're going to do it by inserting a text box like this. We're going to add the value and then total sales we want at the bottom. Now we want this in the middle and we want the value to be 
somewhat big like this. Just make some space like this. And then we're going to simply just replace this with the total sales. So to do that, I'm going to right click, create placeholder. Again, label um, sales. And the value is it needs to be the sales here. But instead of first, it needs to be a sum. Because it needs to be an aggregate of the values in this sales column. So if we hit run, there we go. So it's giving us the total sales value for that uh, country. So how much have they sold? So I don't like this formatting. So we're just going to change this up a little bit. So right click under placeholder properties, numbers. We're going to go to currency, remove the decimal places add a comma separator and that should be fine i'm just gonna make this slightly bigger just so that if the value is too big it will not uh, go to the next next line so let's hit preview again and here we go so that looks a little bit better now so it gives us total sales using the pound sign having a comma and it just gives us the value that we are looking for. Next, let's see if we can add a bar chart here that gives us a breakdown of how much were sold across the different product categories. To do that, we can go and hit insert here. And from here, insert a chart. And to make it easy for us, we're just going to choose chart wizard, um, which will give us some UI to kind of choose and select from. So we're going to choose the data sets, the orders data sets to work with from here. And we want to add a bar chart like this. In the category section, we want to add the category name. And then on the values, we just want to add the total sales. So let's keep it simple like this and hit next. It'll just give us a preview and then we'll hit finish. So you might want to customize this a little bit more. There are a lot of options available to you. So a few things may be, and in Power BI, um, you have the on-object interaction, which works similarly here in the paginated report. So you can just simply select the visual that you you want to customize and click the elements that you want to, to change. So in this case, I click this legend here. And instead of maybe I just want to delete the legend because there are no other categories that I have. So that's going to be redundant. And then on the chart title, I'm just going to call this one categories or product categories. Then if you hit run and choose a country, here we go. So it gives us a breakdown of the total sales by all of these different categories. Pretty easy. Okay. So now that you know how to add a bar chart and a kind of KPI card chart, let's see if we can add the line charts to show the sales and how they fluctuate over time. So to do that, we're going to try to use a line chart. So under insert, we're going to go to chart once again and hit the chart wizard, choose orders, hit next, choose line, hit next. And then from here, we're going to add on our series, the order dates. And then on the values, we're just going to simply use the sales. So I believe this should be it. Order dates. Yep. That should be fine. Or maybe Now the series needs to be order date. I believe. Is that right? I feel like I'm doing something wrong here. Okay, let's let's just preview this and see if this is correct. So let's drag this down the bottom here. Just make some space for it. Hit run. Choose a country. Ah, okay. So that's that is correct. So it gives you for every single uh, date that we have how much of those sales are being sold. So um, you might want to customize this a little bit further. So either change the axis. So in this case, maybe a good one to change would be the bottom part. So you can like before, just click that legend, right click, change the horizontal axis property. So instead of category, just use scalar. That will just convert this into something that is easier to read. So if you hit run, choose another country. 
And here you go. So that's a lot more easier to kind of read because it's in a series type line chart. If you want to learn more about paginated reports and how they work, I covered this in previous videos. The most recent one was about creating invoices. So if you want to learn more about how you can implement that, go check out that video. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.